Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer for you. Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord, Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
A reading from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. 
If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do, not, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Still in the Easter season, still living into what it means for the resurrected Christ to walk among us, many of our gospel readings lately have come from the gospel according to John. Now the structure of our liturgy, as you probably know, is divided into three years. Most of our gospel readings are logically focused on the point of view from one of the synoptics, those that are similar in structure and content. Year A is Matthew, year B is Mark, year C is Luke. All three of them use some of the same source documents to write about the life of Jesus. But this fourth gospel is far different from the other three. And so during particular seasons in the church year, they are sprinkled with gospels, uh, stories from the Gospel of John, especially in these seven Sundays of Easter. John's Gospel is my favorite, I must confess. It was written later than the other three, um, after the fall of the temple, for a religious community that was small and suffered great persecution. Now, two of the major thematic elements that undergird the Gospel of John are community and relationship. In fact, elements of community run throughout all of our readings today. Some of you may know that I was ordained as a vocational deacon in 2004. That's sometimes also known as a permanent deacon. I served joyfully in that ministry until I was called to a different identity in ordained ministry and I left for seminary in 2009. Now vocational deacons are called to be out in the world, serving Christ in the needs of the poor. 
the sick and the dying, those in prison or in trouble, and then bringing their needs and concerns back into the church for prayer, assistance, and compassionate care. The community of deacons in my former diocese reached thousands and thousands of people in diverse populations, locally and globally. The reading we heard today from Acts, which was about the martyrdom of Stephen, is just a transitional point in his life. Stephen was set apart from the fledgling community of Christ followers to serve the widows and the orphans, those who lived on the periphery of society, the overlooked, the poor, the underserved. Stephen's role was to use community resources to ensure that these marginalized people were cared for and brought out of the shadows of mainstream society into the light of God's beloved children. Stephen is now known as the first deacon of the church, and he was set apart so that the deacon or so that the disciples could be about their business of sharing the good news of Christ crucified and resurrected. This gospel passage we heard today comes from what we traditionally call the Last Supper, so often portrayed in Matthew, Mark, and Luke as a somewhat hurried Passover meal with the twelve disciples before rushing off to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray before being taken captive. But I would encourage us to look at this mealtime as reported in John just a little bit differently. Nowhere in John does it say that Jesus gathered with the twelve. I think we could imagine that the room was filled with many of Jesus' closest friends, including women, Mary and Martha, Mary Magdalene, perhaps his mother. Zacchaeus may have been there, as well as his friend Lazarus. Now, this conversation that we hear in John doesn't give us the same sense of hurriedness and anxiety. Instead, I wonder if we might reimagine this Passover meal as one that might be similar to, let's say, a mother who is dying of cancer, saying goodbye to her family, or a father going off to war in some country far away who doesn't know if he will return or not. There would be so much to say, wouldn't there? trying to reassure and calm and make sure that each person knew how much they were loved? We're all products of many communities, the places where we live, our schools and workplaces, scouts, rotary, sports teams, quilting groups, the list goes on and on. Some of these communities touch our lives for just a brief moment. Others are key to our formation as people of integrity, or they teach us a certain skill set, that will guide us throughout our lives. I can think of three particular communities that shaped and formed me into a Christ follower and eventually into an ordained person in the Episcopal Church. Many of you may have heard me speak of a small group that I participated in for more than 10 years. We called it Balanced Life because it was rooted in the Benedictine tradition, which calls its members to structure their lives in work, study, and prayer and which in fact has a rule of life that helps its members structure their lives just so. From my participation in this small group, I learned how to lead worship as a lay person. I was accountable to others in my group for study throughout the weeks of Holy Scripture and the rule of Benedict. I participated in twice monthly meetings, during which time we worshiped together, we reflected upon what we had read, and we shared ways in which we carried out God's call to us. It was incredibly formational in terms of who I am as a Christ follower. Now from, from my, my time in that small group, sprang my participation in another community, Micah Ministries, which was an ecumenical ministry in the urban core that began by feeding four people in a church basement and grew to serving hundreds of people weekly with a hot sit-down meal um, that they came to uh, depend upon in their lives. From that, other ministries were formed. We had a men's prayer group and a women's prayer group. Um, we taught GED. We gave haircuts. We had a clothing pantry that eventually took over about a thousand square feet in the church basement, all to serve the needs of this one population. I also counseled at a battered women's shelter as part of that ministry. 
with the, with the core group of leaders, we would meet weekly to share our experiences, and several times a year we would come together for training and Christian formation. My seminary community was probably the most impor important part of my experience as a student there. I had a covered porch on the side of my house that was the informal gathering place for the older seminarians. There we broke bread together, we studied, we had theological discussions, we shared stories from our lives before seminaries and our journeys that had led us there. I still maintain contact with several people who shared my porch during that time. They remain some of my closest friends and spiritual companions. The importance of community cannot be overstated, and our church, the Church of the Advent, has a strong sense of community. Many churches, in fact most churches do, I believe, we gather together to join with others who are seeking the same relational connections with Christ and with each other. We form bonds of friendship. We raise our children together. We participate in Christian formation of many kinds, which enables us to reflect upon the lives, our lives, and the impact that we might make in the world as we seek and serve Christ in others together and as we care for the underserved in our neighborhoods. Right now, in the midst of this pandemic, with the restrictions of social distancing and face masks and self-isolation and the anxiety of spreading or catching potentially fatal germs, we find that we cannot experience community in the same ways that we have in the past. This is not unlike that community for which John's Gospel was written. They discovered that its understanding about the truth of God carried with it a great price. They were separated from their former religious traditions of Judaism, and they had to carve out a new religious home for themselves, a home that was grounded in the Incarnation. That is our call today, dear brothers and sisters, that we, a creative and resilient people, with a belief in Christ Jesus that is rooted in faith, love, and hope, continue to develop ways to make those community connections. We are exploring new and creative ways to reach out to one another, to stay connected, to continue to share our sure and certain hope in the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This new era will undoubtedly change ways we have worshiped together and have become a part of each other's lives. Some things we will miss terribly, other things we will discover just weren't that important. But I promise you we will find meaningful ways to share our spiritual journeys, to be united in our love for the Lord. To those who were at the Last Supper, Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. That is our message even today. In our knowing that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, we are promised that Jesus will come again, will take us to himself and that where he is, there we may be also. Thanks be to God for our many blessings, but most especially for this one. Amen. Please join with me as we now say the statement of our faith, the Nicene Creed. We believe, believe in one God, God the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit and became incarnate from the Virgin Mary was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people, Forum 2. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, for David, our diocesan bishop, and for Lori, our rector. We pray for this gathering for the Anglican Church of Kenya, the Most Reverend Jackson Ole Sepat, Primate and Archbishop of All Kenya, Diocesan World Mission Department. Pray for the church. We pray for our Episcopal Day School, Brian Klein, Director, Teresa Hoskins, Sixth Grade Teacher, and Redeemer Episcopal School, Eagle Pass. Pray for all places of learning, especially our Episcopal and Anglican schools. On this Mother's Day, we give thanks to God for the divine gift of motherhood in all its diverse forms. Let us pray for all the mothers amongst us today, for our own mothers, those living and those who have passed away, for the mothers that have loved us and those who feel short of loving us fully, for all who hope to be mothers someday and for those whose hope to have been children has been frustrated. For all mothers who have lost children, for all women and men who have mothered others in any way, those who have been our substitute mothers, and we who have done so for those in need, and for the earth that bore us and provides us with our substance. We pray this for all in the name of God, our great and loving mother. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, for Donald, our president, for Greg, our governor, and Trey, our mayor, and for the well-being of all people, for those serving in the armed forces, especially Mike, Michael, Rico, and Noah. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need of trouble. We lift up to you, Holy Lord, those many medical care workers, first responders, food suppliers, and all who are risking their lives for others during this pandemic for the hospitals, shelters, and those places that have been converted into temporary medical and care facilities. We pray your blessings upon them and all who are there being cared for and caring for others. We are thank thankful for your holy healing, most merciful God, and for your presence with us. We pray especially for Rosie Pones, Santiago and Javier Nunez, Elsie Hernandez, Kathy Morrow, Ignacio Garza, and, and Emily Wingender. Please join me now as we pray together. Prayer for people, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, we, uh, you can just say please join with me now as we pray together and then I'll, uh, she doesn't say prayer for the people facing great uncertainty? No. No? Okay. Then just say that again and then I'll edit it. Okay. Yeah, please. She say what? Does she say prayer for the for people facing great uncertainty great uncertainty? No. Okay. Alright, then we'll we'll say that and then I'll just move down to the God who mean or God in the present moment. God in the present moment. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just skip that. Okay. 
Please join with me now as we pray together. God, who in Jesus stills the storm and soothes the frantic heart, bring hope and courage to all who work or wait in uncertainty. Bring hope that you will make them the equal of whatever lies ahead. Bring them courage to endure what cannot be avoided, for your will is health and wholeness. You are God, and we need you. Amen. Pray for all who have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that may, they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for Ron, Charles, Sandy, Yolanda, Ron, Patty, Maria, Ricardo, Pat, Bill, Rick, Jill, Joe, John, Ethan, Logan, Lynn, Erica, Jean, Blanca, Kathitha, David, Gina, Dwayne, Yolanda, Estella, Barbara, Sarah, Jill, Carol, Joe, Suzanne and Frank, Melanie, Anna, Cruz, Chawa, Rayland, Mary, and Matt, Alexis and Davina, AJ, Evelyn, Aria, Dora, Hilda, Carolyn, and Frank. I ask your prayers of thanksgiving for Bob Richardson, for his faith and service to you. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially uh, Bill Carmine. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. We'll continue with Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Thomas and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. 
by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now let us say together for those um, who are worshiping at home, um, a prayer of spiritual communion. In union, bless Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church where your body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Let us now say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, 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 the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness, and in the power of your gracious might, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom. Who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and everlasting freedom, in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I encourage you to um, take photos of yourself uh, passing the peace. We have one on Facebook of um, Imelda and Emma passing the peace with one another at home. It's really meaningful when we can see one another. And so I would encourage you to please take pictures and post them on Facebook. Thank you.